Emily slowly opened her eyes, awakened from sleep by an unidentifiable noise. She glanced around her moonlit bedroom, wondering what could be creaking and groaning at this late hour. Ever since her family moved into this old house, Emily had trouble sleeping through the night. Unsettled noises filtered up through the floor, especially on windy nights like this. At first, she tried mentioning the strange creaks and thumps to her parents in the morning. But they just chuckled and reminded her that old houses make noises. So Emily learned to keep her restless nights to herself. But that didn't stop the noises. Or her curiosity about what caused them. Emily crept out of bed and pressed her ear to the cold wooden floor. The creaks and groans seemed to move slowly across the room below before fading away down the hall. A draft, maybe? Emily wondered as she climbed back under her covers. She huddled deep beneath the blankets, focusing on keeping her breathing calm despite her racing heart. Finally she slipped back into unsteady sleep. The next morning, Emily decided to investigate the nooks and crannies of the house when her parents were out. She started her exploration by removing the heating vent cover in her room. Crouching down, she peered into the dark metal shaft, seeing only endless blackness. Hello? Emily's voice echoed metallically down into the depths. No response except her own echoes bouncing back. She reached her arm in as far as she could, feeling nothing but cold emptiness. With a shiver, she replaced the vent cover. Clearly whatever was making noise below moved around too much to be trapped in a vent. Emily crept downstairs, apprehensive but too curious to stop her search now. She first thoroughly swept the main floor of the house, living room, dining room, kitchen. Knocking on walls and floors, listening for any hollow spots that could hide something. But all seemed normal. Descending into the basement, Emily felt her apprehension rising. But she methodically swept her flashlight beam left and right, seeing only familiar dusty boxes and stacked plastic containers. She was about to give up on her investigation when something in the far corner caught her eye a small door low to the ground she had never noticed before. Heart quickening, Emily carefully opened the little door to reveal a dark cavity underneath the basement stairs. The space was only about three feet high, full of cobwebs and crawling bugs. Shining her light inside, Emily could see pipes running along the left side. But the right disappeared into deeper shadow around a corner. Bracing herself, Emily crawled into the claustrophobic space, cobwebs tangling in her long hair. As she ventured further, the pipes ended and the path continued down at an incline beneath the concrete foundation. Emily glanced behind her, suddenly doubting the wisdom of squeezing unknown distances into the belly of the house. But morbid curiosity won out. She had to know what lay ahead. The cramped earthen tunnel went on interminably. Emily struggled to calm her breathing, claustrophobia threatening to choke her as she crawled onward through the chill subterranean darkness. Finally, the tunnel opened up into a small room of sorts. Emily could only sit hunched over on the dirt floor, but the space felt cavernous after the constricting passageway. She scanned her flashlight slowly around, revealing crude earthen walls and a ceiling shored up with moldy wooden beams. Emily shuddered as her light glinted off something shiny in the corner. She crawled closer to reveal a dirty metal bed frame with a lumpy mattress and bunched-up linen. Was this some sort of bunker built during the Cold War maybe? But why keep it a secret and use space decades later? Nothing about it made sense. The whole room gave off a sinister vibe that raised goosebumps on Emily's arms. She needed to get out now. Retreating back through the claustrophobic tunnel proved even more difficult as panic threatened to suffocate her. But finally Emily emerged back under the basement steps, gagging for fresh air. She slammed the little door shut with a relieved sob and collapsed onto the cold floor. What had she found down there? Some buried part of the house's history, obviously. But her gut told her it was something bad, something that didn't want to be brought to light. Over the next week, Emily agonized over what to do. She knew she should tell her parents about the little doorway and the room beneath their house. But deep down she feared being dismissed again as having an active imagination. As the days passed, her trepidation grew. 
because each night, the noises got louder. Heavy creaks and thuds like footsteps reverberated below Emily's room well into the early morning. Sometimes it even sounded like furniture scraping across a floor in the room below. Dark half-formed suspicions crept around the edges of Emily's mind, threatening to take shape. There was something alive down there, something that only stirred to life, when the house above lay sleeping. Emily squeezed her eyes shut and pulled her blankets over her head, praying desperately for the sounds to stop. But they only got louder, as if in defiance of her silent pleas. A week after her tunnel exploration, Emily jolted awake in the early hours to an explosive crash from below, so violent her bed frame shook. This was no creaking pipes or settling house. Someone or something had destroyed something downstairs. Emily rushed to her parents' room down the hall and shook her dad awake, nearly in tears. Please, you have to come listen. There's something alive under my room destroying stuff. She expected him to scoff and scold her for letting her imagination run wild again. But the genuine terror in his daughter's face seemed to sway him. Emily held her breath as her dad sat up frowning, listening closely. Sure enough, another heavy thud sounded below, followed by an anguished groan, almost human but not quite. His eyes widened and he leapt out of bed without a word, motioning for Emily to stay by her mom. Emily hovered anxiously by her still-sleeping mother, straining to hear anything from below. Whatever her dad was doing down there, she prayed desperately it was enough to rid their house of this thing once and for all. Minutes stretched by, Emily pacing and chewing her nails to nubs. Finally footsteps sounded on the stairs before Emily's dad appeared, shaking his head in bewilderment. I searched that whole basement top to bottom and even went outside checking around the foundation. Nothing seems out of place. He sat on Emily's bed with a heavy sigh. I still think it's just the wind or house settling, but I'm sorry you're frightened. He gave her shoulder a reassuring squeeze. I know this move hasn't been easy on you. How about we go pick out some decorations this weekend to make your room feel more like home? Emily nodded as her heart sank. She offered a thin smile as her dad shuffled back to bed, trusting his daughter was comforted. But her gut told her whatever lurked below their home did not give up so easily. In the following weeks, Emily swung rapidly between overpowering dread around bedtime and resigned apathy during her waking hours. She stumbled through school days in a fog of exhaustion from lack of sleep. At night she tossed and turned, hyper-focused on any sounds from below. Most nights she'd hear it a slithering creak from one side of the room to the other. A soft repetitive thump like something being bounced against the floor. Worst of all, a shuffling weighty drag as if furniture was slowly being moved below her room. Why? To what end? Emily never heard voices or recognizable words. Only these spine-chilling sounds that no one else seemed to register. Researching the house's history proved a dead end. The public record showed only a string of normal families living uneventfully in the home over the decades. No murders, disasters, or other dark events that would cause a haunting. But Emily knew no ghost made the very real noises disturbing her sleep night after night. Something alive and cunning was down there in the dark, up to no human good. After weeks of escalating creaking, the breaking point came on another restless night. A new sound entered the fearful symphony, something heavy being dragged in repetitive short bursts across the floor below. Then horrible loud THUNKS as if heavy objects were being slammed down around the edges of the room over and over. Emily cowered in her bed, too panicked to even scream. Tears streamed down her cheeks as she shook beneath the covers. Whatever insidious presence had be sleeping below their home was ready to come out. And it was violently making that goal known. Emily had no choice left but to flee. As quietly as possible, she slipped downstairs and out the front door into the cold fall night. At least whatever evil brood under their house hadn't broken free yet. She needed to get help before whatever was trying to force its way up succeeded. But who would believe her? Wandering aimlessly down the sleepy residential street, Emily weighed her options. She could go to a neighbor or trusted teacher from school. 
but they would surely just call her poor parents, who already worried about Emily's overactive mind. The police were no good for the same reason. But Emily knew in her core she wasn't imagining things. Noises couldn't lie. Passing by the old church on the corner, Emily paused under the glowing cross above the entrance. For the first time, she sent up a silent prayer not for herself, but for whatever lay trapped and angry below her feet each night. Because she realized that it was not fully human, but a life-deserving compassion all the same. She prayed it would find peace. Emily approached the heavy oak doors, hoping maybe a priest could advise her how to cleanse the darkness in that buried space. But the entrance was locked and dark at this late hour. Defeated, Emily turned towards home. She froze at the sight in the distance, was that flashing red and blue lights down her street? Please, no. Emily broke into a frantic run. Sure enough, her house swarmed with police cars and an ambulance out front. Neighbors clustered in robes and slippers, looking fearful and confused. Emily pushed through them shouting for her parents. A policewoman caught her in a tight hug. There you are. We've been so worried, she said. Over her shoulder, Emily saw paramedics wheeling a stretcher holding a writhing form down the driveway. A white sheet covered its face and body, but the shape was humanoid, its limbs straining against the restraints. When the police released Emily into her parents' arms inside, she watched in numb disbelief as officers opened the hidden little door under the basement steps. A horrible clawing screech echoed up from the black abyss within. The officers quickly shut the opening and dragged furniture over it, face pale. We found your daughter's drawings, Emily's mom whispered, eyes rimmed with red from tears. Just like she said, something was living down there. Emily nodded, feeling only relief to finally be believed. After the chaos subsided, Emily's dad sat her down. I owe you the biggest apology, sweetheart. You tried to show me so many times, but I refused to truly see the danger. Emily was surprised to see shame in her dad's eyes. I just wanted to believe I could make a happy new home for us and ignored all the signs. But you were so much braver. He hugged Emily tight. Thank goodness you got out so we realized something was horribly wrong before. He trailed off, mouth set in a grim line. Emily knew he blamed himself for what almost happened. It's okay dad, she whispered. We know now. The mystery of what exactly had made its home in the buried room hardly mattered. All that mattered was her family awake and alive together. The next morning, her parents told Emily they had rented a new house on the other side of town, no questions asked. As Emily helped box her belongings, she wondered if they could leave the darkness behind so easily. She thought of the writhing figure disappearing into the ambulance, how human it had seemed in its pain and rage at being exposed. Wherever it ended up, Emily prayed it would find some measure of peace. She took one last look at her bedroom where so many restless nights had passed. I forgive you, she whispered to whatever might still lurk below. Then she turned her back and walked away. Mystery would shroud the old house once more, but Emily's family was free. And she had learned even darkness deserves empathy. She held that lesson close as they drove toward the sanctuary of light and fresh starts.